Hello, my name is Marcio Sartorelli. Uh, I'm currently on my master's studies on structural engineering at the Polytechnic School of the University of São Paulo. And I'm going to talk about the uh, first results of my research. And I'm going to present you a fast shape finding procedures combining the natural force density method and parametric program. The force density method is a well-known form of finding method developed by Linkwitz and Schacht in the beginning of the 70s and determines that if a system of central forces, if you stabilize a concept of force densities, that is the uh, ratio of the force and the length of the elements, we could simplify the nonlinear equilibrium equations to a linear to linear equilibrium equations regarding to the coordinates and applying uh, consistent boring conditions we could retrieve the coordinates of a bending free shape under pure tension here we can see some examples of an isotropic solutions for cable nets and for different ranges of the border force densities and the inner border densities and it's important to notice that this approach if you determine the force densities to a constant tensions and iterate the value over the meshes you acquire you could achieve a solution that the tension of on each element is the same that you specify it the natural force density method is an extension of the force density matrix to triangular elements using the proposition of the Argyris uh, membrane elements that defines a vector natural forces, which you can retrieve a vector of internal forces. All of them can be retrieved by an initial stress field, and you could stabilize the stiffness matrix for these three nodes elements, uh, considering a continuum space. And these are some results of the natural force densities method and it retrieves continuous me uh, geometries and as you can recall for the force densities if you iterate the process define a constant initial stress field it will converge to a uniform stress distribution state that if you recall the soap bubble analogy uh, in minimal surface theory uh, the geometry that we achieve with this uniform distribution is the same of a minimal surface. So with this process we can exactly determine minimal surface regarding of the approximation that, if, that we could try to do with this method using only force densities. And here have some extensions of the method. The first one is the definition of the natural forces regarding orthotropic stresses using director planes and another one uh, developed by Fernand Zepoletti uh, is the development of a quadrangular element made with the partition of four sub-triangular elements each one with the half of the thickness of the original element and it was shown with benchmarks uh, with ANSYS that this approach is a good approximation and not diverse to the exact solution. Here are some solutions of orthotropic membranes. As you can see, the middle saddle point is above the mid height of the supports. And you can see the here the results of the natural force density method and its comparison to the same problem, but using the nonlinear equations using ANSYS. As you can see, the results basically match. And all these results I'm showing you of the natural force densities and force densities are from SATS, Static Analysis of Thought Structures. This is a routine written in MATLAB by Gerard and Pauletti. And it's basically a program for nonlinear geometric analysis of membranes and also form finding procedures. And the idea of SATS was not to be a co optimized code, but rather be a simple environment to implement new elements and have uh, the simplest analysis required for a thought structure.
However, in SATS, for instance, you could need to have a third-party CAD software to generate the surface meshes and give the information for the program. So it's really important to be aware of computer-aided design and computer-aided engineering integration. And this basically can be done here, I show two ways. One, you have a computer-aided engineering-based software as ANSYS or Abacus that have CAD features inside it. And we also can have computer design basic, based software as AutoCAD or Rhinoceros that you could retrieve the geometry data and generate plugins that apply computer aided engineering procedures and you could retrieve the results uh, on the computer aided design software. And specifically in Rhinoceros, I have the plugin Grasshopper that is a visual programming environment that allows a parametric workflow of the geometry data. So you can define the parameters that will guide the geometry and then assign mesh and properties and to many types of analysis and then retrieve the results in the CAD software itself. All of this can be done uh, all the changes on the geometry will reflect on the, all the analysis, so you could have like some sorts of integrated solutions in this workflow also. And here you have an example of a structure that the parameters define the wireframe, and so also you could set the cross sections at the parametric workflow handles any modification on the geometry instantly on the 3D model and on the structural model. Uh, I had a previous work on the undergraduate research that I, in this concept of parametric workflow, developed a plugin for Grasshopper with natural force density methods applications, especially on shell structure form refining. It was written fully in C sharp, only with triangular elements and with no stress recover, as we are recovering results in camera analysis that had buckling analysis. And the code was quite simple, but using C sharp only, especially for numerical solutions, we noticed that the code was getting really inefficient. So the solution and what is the really the beginning of my master's studies was to rewrite this code separating for data management in super a C-sharp code and for numerical solutions, a uh, optimized C++ code using Eigen library. And we also added quadrangular elements and now you could plot the stresses uh, of the found shape with graph colors. So this is an example of the software and we have a 50-50 grid of elements, quadrangular elements, and it can specify the height of the hyper, and you can expand the, specify the force density of the border cables, the force density of the membrane elements, the initial stresses that we are imposing, we can define the direct director plane for orthotrophic stresses, you will assign this to a model, then you can have the solutions. In this case, you have 15 interactions. You see that you have 15 interactions in only 200 milliseconds. milliseconds. And then, as you can see in bats, if you see here, it converts quite quickly because, as you can see, in only three iterations, you already have a uniform state. Oops, three. In Four, uh, three or four iterations, they already have an initial stress. You can also ha see that the forces are all the ones we defined in the border cables, and you can also recover the support reactions of the stress field that you impose it. This is an example of a conoid minimal surface, and here you can see you can set orthotropic stresses but with them we cannot integrate because it will not converge. You only converge for isotropic stresses. And it's interesting here to test the Goldsberg limit that it states that it's only possible to have a minimal surface between two circles if the height of the conoid is less than approximately 1.32 the radius of the circles. So if it's trying slowly to increase, we will notice that when we reach 1.32, the solution will not converge anymore. As you, you stop the iterations, 
we can see that the solution is completely diverging because it's impossible to have a minimal surface under these conditions. And here you have like a more complex uh, shape that can be used for instance to cover a building and you can have change the parameters you can see that we reach uh, quite on minimal shapes with these sh structures however it's interesting the conoid shape here uh, can tell us that if we increases the height that much we are also going to uh, disobey the Goldsberg limit. So if if you want to have a minimal shape, you want you need to have these heights limited. And finally, here you can see an application for a funicular shape finding, and you can state the stress of the structure, and also. And you can define the, the weight of the structure by determining the density in the gamma par parameter. And as you can see, in these types of uh, form findings, you can only uh, the solution not converge because we are defining uh, no new forces, a force vector. But we retrieve a nuclear shape with a, a non-uniform stress state. So to test the performance of the new developed code, uh, we are going to make a benchmark, benchmark between SETS, the older code, with Kangaroo Physics, which is a well-known good physics software uh, that is built inside for software. Uh, we are going to build two models inside Kangaroo, one for fine minimal edge length, as we call that this is not the minimal surface procedures, as we are going to minimize only edges and not the surface. And a component model with super bubble analogy that tries to reach a minimal surface for cozy zero mean Gaussian curvature. To define the parameters for the benchmark, we will assume that if you define 200 iterations in beds, you will reach a minimal surface. And we use this, compare this geometry with all other geometries on all methods and all iterations. And you could retrieve these graphs from the iterations and by time. And as you can see here, a bats and the minimal surface procedure in Kangaroo uh, converge to the same solution, which was what we expected. And the minimal edges don't because it's an approximate solution and obviously it would do not converge to the exact solution. So as you can see, if the both kangaroo methods have like this bouncing effect that is particular of the system that emulates dynamical dynamic problems to find solutions. Uh, but that's it, it converts really quickly and directly in less than five iterations. And also, in terms of uh, performance, it's, you can see above in time that beds converge really quickly for a dense problem of 50-50 grid, while both methods require 200 to 400 milliseconds to converge. Beds converge in basically 20 milli, approximately 30 milliseconds. Here you can have a resume of the results. These graphs is clearly seen comparing beds to sets that uh, it's really important to have full optimization if your goal is to develop a tool that responds quickly. That is, this is really important inside parametric workflows, and also that direct methods as beds uh, tends to perform better than Kangaroo methods that are based on pseudo dynamic procedures as it found uh, the solution in fewer iterations and uh, normally these iterations takes a little longer than the methods in kangaroo but the overall time is really is lower than the other methods and the next steps of my research will be to include a geometric nonlinear structural analysis inside bats 
to work together with the form finding procedures and also includes procedures for safety evaluation analysis and cutting patterns for the membranes fabrication. And well, that was what I want to show you. Here are the reference and our contact and I hope you enjoyed this video.